Hello and welcome to Covent Garden and today's adventure where I'm going to be visiting the London Transport Museum and I've walked around three or four minutes uh, from the Covent Garden tube station uh, here to the entrance of the museum. Really looking forward to visiting. Uh, it actually started uh, back in 1980. Since then it closed in 2005, reopened in 2007 after a refurbishment uh, and yeah I'm looking forward to getting inside, learning all about the history of London's transport, seeing various different vehicles and also exhibits as well. Uh, but yeah, like I say, nice and easy to get here. Uh, you know, when you get to Covent Garden Tube Station, if you walk down towards the heart of Covent Garden, and you'll see the building, it's got all the uh, branding on it as well, and you will uh, can't miss it really, it's nice and easy to find. It's also got a gift shop uh, just to the side of it, and a cafe as well. Uh, yeah, let's head over to the uh, ticket counter, have a look at the prices, and uh, head inside for today's adventure. Here's a look then at the admission prices as of February 2019. For an adult to visit the museum, it's £17.50. However, seniors, students and concessions actually get in for £15. Age 17 and under uh, are actually free to enter and under 12 must be accompanied by an adult. Uh, it also includes 12 months entry from the day of purchase. So you can come back again for free uh, as long as you keep that uh, ticket, which is really good. And it is open daily from 10 until six with the last admission at uh, quarter past five. We've also got the opening times there for the shop and the uh, cafe as well. Yeah, let's head around inside. I'm gonna buy my ticket. You can see just here, the queue here for the museum tickets. I'll have a little look in the shop, of course. As I like to see when I visit these attractions, we'll uh, look in there at the end of the museum once we've been through. This is where I'm gonna buy my ticket and uh, go in. Okay then, so here I am inside the London Transport Museum. Nice and easy to get my ticket there. There was a short queue, uh, but only took a couple of minutes. And uh, yeah, I just had to give my name over and also sign the ticket. And it means that I can use that then to come back as many times as I want to within 12 months. Uh, that's really good. Um, but yeah, here's a little look inside. Massive open space, as you can see here in the whole entrance section. There's a cloakroom down there on the right hand side as well, if you want to leave any larger items. Uh, and that's where we'll make our way back out at the end as well. The door on the right there uh, into the cafe and the uh, gift shop as well. Loving all the screens and stuff here and all the London Underground lines there as well. And yeah, let's start by exploring. She said that the best thing to do is head up to the top uh, and work my way down. So I'm going to take the lift up to level two. Is that the top? Yeah, there we go. And we'll start with 19th century London and gradually work our way down. Uh, the growth of the suburbs, steam underground, uh, the different media galleries, and obviously back down to the bottom here where we'll uh, have a good explore round. Only eight people in the elevator at one time. Oh, that was good timing, wasn't it? There we go. Up we go. Oh, it does it automatic, does it? Oh, very modern. Up we go. Going up. Oh, wow. So the view that you're greeted by when you come out of the elevators is looking down at all the different levels that we've got to explore here at the London Transport Museum. It's my first time visiting here as well. You always get that bit of excitement when you come in somewhere for the first time. And if you've watched uh, any other videos here on Adventure Sean and also on my other channel, Theme Park Worldwide, you'll know that I love transport and especially the likes of the London Underground and the London buses. Oh, I love it all. And we've got some buses down there to go and have a look round uh, on the ground level. But uh, yeah, we'll start off at the top just here. Like I say, it's a huge open space. And we're starting off with London in 1800. St. Paul's Cathedral there. River Thames, all the horse and carts making their way over. A very different skyline to what it is now. The chair to anywhere. Ah, oh, there you go. So yeah, you get in these chairs and two men would carry you around. Still used on the streets of London in the early 1800s. So you just publicly hire one of those, I suppose. Now you can still see these around in some places, um, you know, just for tourist purposes. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's quite interesting how they got that on display. Oh, of course, with this being a museum, there'll be a lot of exhibits, but also quite a bit of reading material as well uh, as we go around. So I'll be having a good read. I'll also share some of the fascinating facts and information with you all as well. Yeah, you can see how it's going to tell us all about like the horse-drawn carriages, the railways there from the 1800s into the 1900s. Oh, I'm loving these carriages here and the fact that they've got the steps so you can go into them as well is brilliant. Really nice. Let's uh, go and have a look inside here, I think. A country which boasts of its refinement 
Here we are then inside the Seven, omnibus. Respectfully to Talking to us as well. Here they got some uh, got some audio in this newspaper. She cannot escape from your brutality. <laughs> Eight, if you bring a dog, let him be small and confined by a string. I don't think she looks very interested Nine, in what he's saying, do you? Do not introduce large <laughs> parcels. An omnibus is not a van. Ten, reserve bickerings and disputes. So after coming out of the omnibus just there, just having a read of this, and it's fascinating. So less than an hour's walk, 200 years ago, London had no public transport. The capital was still quite small. If you walked for half an hour in any direction from Westminster Bridge or St Paul's Cathedral, you would be in the country. How interesting is that? Wow, really shows how much London has developed over the years. High Park Corner there in 1797. I do love all the history we've got in this country though. I really do. Right, so this is from 1829. I like how there's a lot of interactive displays and you can press different buttons. Design developments, journeys. It is in action. And service. Now oh, there we go. See them all there on the streets of London. Very well presented in here. I know there's quite a lot of museums that are for free uh, in London. You can visit them for free or just give a donation. Um, but you know, like you do have to pay to come in, like I say, £17.50. Um, but you've got to think, you know, you're seeing some very unique items and stuff like this, which is, I love it to bits, I really do. In very good condition as well. I assume they've all been restored. Tilling horse bus from 1875. There it is out there on the street in full glory in 1979. Back in 1875, wow. Brilliant. Some more fascinating reading material just here. So passenger traffic on the river increased rapidly when steamboats were introduced in 1815 and by the mid 1850s steamboat services uh, carried several million passengers a year. Uh, many were pleasure trippers but every day around 15,000 people travelled by steamboat to work and that was twice the number that took the train. And here's a look at one of the steamboats down here. Princess Alice, that one's called. So these boards just here explain how the railway has developed over the years. Of course, we've got London's mainline railway stations in 1875. St Pancras there, beautiful building. Charing Cross there in 1864. Victoria in 1861. Moving up a little bit, King's Cross in 1890. Of course, right next door to St Pancras. Liverpool Street in 1884 and Cannon Street down here in 1866. And there's a map there of where they all are. Obviously St Paul's Cathedral there. And the map of where they all are around London. But trains arrive at a cost. In the 1860s, the Southern Main Line got permission to extend across the river to Victoria, Blackfriars, Charing Cross and Cannon Street. Uh, and also by 1900, London had 15 Main Line railway terminals, uh, which is more than any other city in the world. Fascinating, isn't it? That's from 1864. Oh, it's amazing to see this trolley here up close. Wow, look at this. All the different areas where it called that. Beautifully looked after and restored as well. Unfortunately, we can't go on board, but we can get up close to it. It's always nice to see these up close and personal. Horse tram conductor. <laughs> I do like how they're telling the story and information about it all. Advertising starts early, ah, I see. So obviously, yeah, this started as an advertising space, so things would be attached onto the sides. From the side of a bus to the back of a ticket. Stevenson Horse Tram, 1882. There we are. On a visit to Kreitch in Derbyshire in 1993, my birth year. And Kreitch, yeah, it's not too far from me. It's about a 40 minute drive from where I am. And uh, yeah, I'll actually be doing a video there this year. So make sure you do check that out. Hello, do you want a stroke? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> not too busy in here today either, so it's great to uh, look round and not have massive crowds. Oh, he looks happy up there, doesn't he? Hello there. <laughs> Some nice little models here as well of some of the trams and also the rails for the tramway. I'd love to have gone back in time and seen all of these in action. But that's the beauty of Crike actually and definitely somewhere that I'll take you guys for another adventure at some point in 2019. Oh, loving all these. And yeah, you see the advertising on the side there. Keen's Mustard. Oh, I really like that one there as well. Final section to look down here, just about London's railway network and by the end of the 19th century, London had a complex network of mainline, suburban and freight railways. Um, so yeah, I will continue moving along. That's it for up here on level two. We go down these steps, the journey continues. I like how it all develops, you know, it starts off with, um, you know, going back to the 1800s here in London and then moving as we go further down to more modern times. And in 1901, London's population reaches 4.5 million. It's a lot more than that now. <laughs> Obviously, there's plenty of lift access. And uh, yeah, staircase just here as well. So we'll go down the stairs. Yeah, all we've seen is that, and we've still got all that to go. Let's go down to uh, level one. It's quite a big space in here. It's bigger than what I was expecting, actually. They built this museum in such a wonderful building with all the archways going over. And that's a preview of what we've got to see down on the ground level. As we can see here, the uh, upper level here runs all the way around here. We've got lots to discover. But of course, we're starting off with building the world's first underground railway. And obviously, a lot of the original tunnels, it was cut and cover. So they literally dig in the ground where they wanted the tunnel to go put in the tracks in the tunnel and then build over it so then there could be buildings or roads put above them telling you all about it just here some images of the cut and cover protest taking place fascinating steam underground an impossible task so every effort was made to reduce the steam and smoke from locomotives underground one unsuccessful trial tested a fiberglass locomotive that ran on hot bricks in the end conventional steam engines were used but with special pipes to condense the exhaust steam into side tanks of cold water so there you go of information about it all so yeah this is what was running on the london underground Wow, it's amazing how much things have developed, isn't it, over the years. This shows again the cut and cover, obviously a station there built underneath the streets. And then all the soil put back in and roads put on top. The Metropolitan Railway Company was formed in 1854 to carry through this groundbreaking project. Yeah, so it's just saying how it was built under the road, it would avoid most of the property demolition needed to build a railway at ground level. And the good thing about the London Underground, or the Tube as it's commonly known by a lot of people, um, it is all the history that it's got. And a lot of that history is still there to see today. The fascinating image there. It really is fantastic to see this locomotive just here from 1866 from the Metropolitan Railway. Wow. Number 23, as we can see there on the side. Great to get up next to that. Lots of different bits of information about traveling on the steam locomotives. Look at all the advertising there inside Charing Cross. Wow. So it was very well used from the start, but the smoky atmosphere of the tunnels and stations was not pleasant. 
with some of the fares there as well and the different stations, first class, second class, third class. No such thing now. I'd just love to have seen these steam locomotive making their way through some of these stations. Crazy. The Metropolitan was the first railway in London to offer cheap workmen's fares on some early morning services. Parliamentary trains. The picture there from the Aldersgate bomb, 1897. Pictures from the Times. Tells us a little bit here about underground bombings and also underground accidents as well. Hello there. <laughs> you all right there, mate? <laughs> Inner Circle Railway, you can just see the map there on the side. Great to see these. I also did a video last year here on Avengers Shore, one of my early videos actually, uh, from the National Railway Museum in York. So make sure you check that out if you've not seen it. And we get to go on lots of different trains and sit in different train carriages. Look at the inside there, the carriage, very comfortable. Don't think you'd fit anywhere near as many people in there though as they do now. Can't imagine people all standing down the middle there, can you? <laughs> Early posters. Saying how you can live outside of the city and then commute in. Out to the suburbs. It's still one of those things now, commuting. It's even bigger now, isn't it? People live on the outskirts and commute in. Oh, here we go. Got a little model train here. Oh, I like that. That's the end of the track, is it? I wonder where does it go then? Ah, here we are. It just runs down the side there. Oh, that's quite interesting. I like that. Ladies only carriage there. We need to walk around this back section here now. Metroland, <laughs> not the theme park that was at uh, the Metro Centre in Gateshead. By Metro to Watford, a new route. Love all these old posters. So continue walking around this way. Next up then we've got some of the posters here, all advertising the underground. And it says here as well about how you can visit the other museum at the depot in Acton, West London. So that's definitely something that I'd like to do at some point. Again, something that I've never done before. There's so much in London what I've not done before over the years that, you know, filming up the videos of Adventure Show has just given me the opportunity to go and see. London Low Emission Zone poster. Wonderful museum though this, I definitely recommend it. Right in the heart of London as well. Like I say, two or three minute walk from Covent Garden Tube Station. One full bus equals 40 empty cars. Make a difference, use your car sensibly. <laughs> Look at those in there. <laughs> All the snail taxis there, or take the tube, I like that one, I really like that. This gives us a bit more information here. Metropolitan Railway Electric Locomotive, 1922. Obviously when the steam trains went out and electric came in. Move down the cars ladies and gentlemen, move down the cars. Stand clear of the doors, mind the gap. <laughs> Whistle while you work. Let's have a little look on the train, shall we? Oh, he's just turned the lights on. <laughs> Here we are. You are right down there? <laughs> See, this starts to look a bit more familiar to the London Underground trains of today, doesn't it? With the seats at the side all of the handrails. We don't have the posh lights on here there anymore, do we? Just some flickering lights on some of the lines. 
Oh no, he switched the lights on. Or maybe it was a sensor, was it, when he got, came on here, maybe? Oh, there we go. Is it a sensor? Let me try walking. Da -da -da -da. I'm not too sure. I can't even see a button at the side. Strange. <laughs> this brings us down to the end here where we was just, so I want to be heading up in the other direction. Another photo there, St Paul's, that iconic dome. So much reading material, which is great. Obviously there are the steps to head down, but we don't want to be doing that yet. We're going to head around the other side and continue uh, looking around. These seats just look way too comfy not to have a set on. So I thought I'm just going to take a breather for a few minutes. I thought I'll walk around London today. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd sit down, just watch this TV and learn a little bit about the uh, history of uh, the London Underground. It's also a speaker actually built in to the chair. You can feel it vibrating. Really weird. There's the old school TV. Giving us a bit of information. Right then, let's have a look inside these drawers. What's in here? Hmm, let's open it up. Da -da -da -da. Ah, there we go, loads of leaflets. Ooh, a little uh, trolley cart there. Oh, loving all that old school branding as well. Really interesting. We've got loads of different ones to open up. Should we go for this one? Electrifying sub Suburbia. Loads of interesting material to see. I've already paid. Hey, tickets. Great how they got these all on display. And here's another really nice view looking over everything that we're going to be seeing down on the ground floor. That's another nice photo point that, so I'm going to take a picture. Like I say, if you've not already followed me on my Instagram, it's at Sean Sandbrook. Really appreciate it if you give me a follow there. That's where I post various different pictures. You can find a link to it in the video description and also in the end of the video as well. Now, as I've said throughout this video, the building, what the London Transport Museum is in, is absolutely gorgeous. Loving all the windows and also the archways inside. And it gives us a bit of information here all about it. It actually used to be a flower market and it ceased trading in 1974. Uh, as you can see from the photo there, it all stood empty. Obviously the museum has been here since 1980. Um, but there you go, yeah, a bit of information all about it there. I know I say it quite a bit, but if you want to read it, just pause the video. You'll be able to read all of that in a bit more detail. Yeah, this gives you a good overview. There's a crossing down there and oh, some old trains to look at. And yeah, that's the biggest floor down there of uh, the three. Uh, the floors get bigger as you go down. I can see why uh, they say start at the top now. Blooming marvellous. There you go. The Victorian flower market. Gosh, crazy, isn't it? How they transformed the building. But it's still got that nice uh, sort of feel to it as well that you can see there. Great that it's got a new use, isn't it? And there's the train that we saw a little bit earlier in the video. We're in along the beam just over there. Also here then on the first level is a gallery with lots of different artwork as we can see on the walls that all relate to Transport for London. You can see it continues just down the steps there as well. Very peaceful in here. It's got its own automatic doors on. In fact, I'm the only person in here. There's quite a few other people in the museum, but must not be many art fans inside today. But yeah, you can see lots of different pieces there and uh, yeah, access just through the automatic door. So this is quite good for the kids around here. You've got a bit of a play area going on. <laughs> there you are, you've got all these different tunnels to crawl in and have photos and things in as well. All next to this London bus just here. Should we go, on, go in and have a look? There we go, that's it. All aboard! <laughs> Does the bell work? Oh no. <laughs> there you go, guy. It looks real, this, doesn't it? I wonder if they actually got like a real one and like chopped it in half or something. I don't know. It's interesting. Touch your cards there. Boop. There we go. I can get in the driver's seat here. Look, drive my own London bus. Oh, there we go. All tickets and passes, please. All tickets and passes. As we continue then down from the mezzanine onto the ground floor, you can see there another entrance into the exhibition there with all the 
artwork. Oh yes, loving the design of this in here and the way they've placed things. It means it's really nice for seeing everything. Looks great. Got all the traditional London buses over there and so much more to discover. So let's continue down the stairs. So you've also got some more play equipment down here on the ground level. You've got a taxi just there as you saw, a London cab. You've got the bus there. You've got a Thames boat as well. Let's have a look around some of these vehicles just here. Might as well start off here, shall we? Obviously all the actual vehicles and we've got these screens that continue. Very consistent with giving you the information uh, on everything in here, which is great. There we are. So this is like an old taxi, isn't it? An old London cab from 1938. There we go. Ah, there you go, outside Putney Bridge Station in 1924. There we go, outside uh, Kilburn Underground Station there in 1935. Oh, look at the conductor's uniform there, oh, I love that. Wish you could try it on and have a photo. <laughs> London bus just here. God, so much to see. Of all these trams but yeah if you've never heard of Christ Tramway Village like I say we'll definitely go in this year in Derbyshire not too far from where I am um, but they've got all the different showrooms with all the trams in like this however you can actually uh, ride on the trams as well they have maybe three or four uh, sometimes more actually depending on the type of year uh, in, in service so you can actually ride them trolley bus There we are, there's that in action. Fascinating to see, isn't it? All these different models down here as well. A cycle, something that you see a lot more of now around London. A lot of people are cycling. Obviously, you don't have to wait for anything then when you cycle. And this is, hello, you're right over there, mate. Uh, you can see it's actually changing the line there for the route for this trolley bus. By changing the wire. Again, something you see in action at Kreitch. Let's continue down this way. So many different photos and, and reading material in here, which is fantastic as well. Here's a map of the old tramway network throughout London. Oh, I love trams. It's a shame that we don't see these in action anymore. One of my favorite modes of transport. Always like trams and trolleys and oh, really want to go to San Francisco at some point and see that. Oh, this screen's out of order. They've let me down. That's the first thing that I've seen that's uh, like got an out of order sign on it. I'll let them off. It's only one. <laughs> that was giving us the information on this tram just here. West Ham Corporation Tramways. Everything's so well looked after here. different models I love how these are all on display I wish that theme parks did this sort of thing more obviously that's what started me doing YouTube videos you know so if you've never seen my other channel theme park worldwide and definitely check it out yeah I do wish that um, you know theme parks did more for their history especially parts like Blackpool Pleasure Beach and Alton Towers that have got a lot of history let's go have a look at some different train carriages shall we or oh, we can go inside this one Oh, loads to see all about maps and stuff down there. Underground map of London. So that looks very confusing compared to how it is now. They simplified the map and it looks a lot better. And obviously a lot of the lines used to be run by different companies as well before Transport for London came around and putting it all together. I'll have a look in that room in a second. Let's not miss out on anything. Love all these old signs as well. Loving the old music as well. <laughs> Oh, 
cars to the world's first electric tube in 1890. The original City and South London Railway was nearly three miles long. It ran from Stockwell in South London to King William Street near London Bridge. That was a very proud moment and obviously it made the air a lot cleaner. Shall we look inside here, shall we? So this is one of them carriages, isn't it? Eighteen ninety. We'll have a look inside here. Obviously, you can see with the curved roof and not very tall in here. Old signage there. Wait till the train stops. Passengers are not allowed to smoke in this carriage. <laughs> Down the bottom there. Blurred out a little bit there. Let's have a look around this section just here, shall we? Oh wow, oh loving this. Really enjoying this museum, it's great to see and you definitely want a good couple of hours to see it all. This kind of looks a bit like Crouch actually because they've got like some of the buildings and stuff a little bit like this and the road sound effects and things to listen to. Great. This section tells us how they dug future underground lines deeper underneath the ground. You see that from this image of the ground level. 1880s gave London its first deep level tube. Digging deeper, let's go have a little look through here, not missing anything around that corner there, I don't think. Ah, so this is showing like the lift systems, isn't it? Ah, I see. So much to it, isn't there? It really is. The first passenger lift in a New York department store in 1857. Ah, so okay, got installed in 1857, so they obviously looked at that for the tube. To make sure it's I see. The sensation of descending this lift of 50 feet to get below the level of the Thames is somewhat similar to a balloon experience. <laughs> Love that. Escalator legend, Bumper Harris. Just telling you all about them escalators. Obviously, it started off as wooden. Escalators. The average is four feet two inches stopping distance from full speed. The Victoria Line called for 42 new escalators for use at 11 of the 12 stations. The civil engineers built the foundations for them. Then the mechanical engineers and their contractors took over the responsibility for the installation and proper functioning of the machinery. So some of the underground lines are 58 meters, 192 feet below ground. To run at Earl's Court in the year 19. Can you imagine if it was all just steps. And the wooden leg was employed to run up and down all day to show the passengers how safe and easy it was. Map of an escalator there, a model of an escalator rather. Built in 1936, adapted in the 1960s to represent one of the standard Otis escalators installed on the new Victoria line. There you go. This model was also used in the exhibit in the public inquiry that followed the disastrous 1987 fire at King's Cross Underground Station, uh, where unfortunately 31 people died um, when discard discarded cigarettes ignited dirt and grease that had built up under the escalator. And so there you go. Obviously from then we saw a lot of the more modern escalators put in and the wooden ones replaced. I actually went on a wooden escalator the other week in New York in the Macy's department store, the world's largest shop. Didn't get around to filming a video there unfortunately due to time, but I'm sure I will do it at some point in the future if I go back. Loving all this design here, like we're underneath in the tunnel, showing you sort of how thin some of the tunnels used to be. Talking all about Crossrail, of course, is yet to open, got delayed, didn't it, Crossrail? That's this interesting, it tells you all about how the tunnel is reinforced, all the walls with the concrete sections going in. 
Any gaps behind the rings are filled. Rams then push against the nearest ring to force the shield forward into fresh clay. One of the tumbling machines in action there. Just before the new century, the age of electricity, his shields with their rams and lines of all kinds. And to power the trains underground, way too steamy. Obviously we already saw this section a couple of minutes ago. Maybe I came up the wrong path. We should have come straight up this way. So if you are coming, follow up the ramp there. So I've already obviously seen this section. So I'm going to continue round and we'll carry on where we left off. So this section tells us all about how they needed to get people to use the tube again. So by 1907, London had a network of eight electric underground railways. Six completely new tube railways had been built in less than 20 years, and the old steam underground lines of the Metropolitan and District Railways were electrified in 1905. All that remained was to persuade people to use them. That's what all these adverts were for. If we continue into here, we get to learn a lot more about the branding of the underground and transport in London. Loving these projections down here. Now, the round oil is one of my favorite parts of the underground and all the branding of it. Very famous, and obviously you can still see a lot of these older round oils around on the tube today. Some more old signage there as well. Tufnell Park, Bakerloo Tube, look at that old sign, wow, I wonder how old that is. Piccadilly Tube. Combined season tickets available <laughs> by train, bus, tram, via this station. Well, that's quite interesting. I've seen anything like that before. It's from the Tate Modern, is it? Have a look at it. The art gallery. Different designs on the tube maps obviously on the front of all the maps you get various different designs and where a lot of these ones put in 2011 2009 8 <laughs> as soon as you have mastered the language of a map you have mastered the clue to a new and never-ending joy <laughs> Yeah, you look at that map, it's a lot more confusing than the map of today, isn't it? London's Railways. Fascinating, really, really interesting. One of the best museums I've been to, actually. I'd say this, and also the National Railway Museum in York, are my favourite museums that I've done. I mean, I love transport, it's right up my street. Really like seeing all this, especially all the old uh, roundels and, and things like this classic. I'm sure we'll do more videos on the tube at some point. I'd like to talk more about the history of it and show some of the more unique uh, items that can still be found to this day out there on the London Underground. Bring back the red. Your ticket and your change. <laughs> New ticket and change machines. Wow. New London transport facility. All the different design improvements that were made also to impact the environment models down here look some of the stations oh they're great as we continue to head around this way to look at another tube train so here we can see an electrified tube train from 1939 we're actually lucky enough to be able to step onto this one as well and have a look. Wow. How great to see this and obviously the design of this now very similar uh, to that of some of the trains that operate to this day. Obviously without all of the wooden panels and interior of course, but the format is the same in terms of, you know, you've got your light in, the handles at the top, a bit further down, all the advertising boards, your map all the way along the side and of course your windows with the seats down the side <laughs> I like how they've acted that out there for the screen at the end oh, it's great to see this in here really like that 
Traveling on the underground has changed over the past 100 years. From car designs to ticket barriers, taking the tube has seen many improvements. Obviously we can see some of those as we move down this way. Loving all these old posters. So much information, lots of things to read, which is great. <laughs> Look at all of those items there. I know I had it on the train. Lost Property Office at Baker Street has received misplaced items since 1933. In 1950, nearly 350,000 items were handed in. Today, Lost Property is down to around 150,000 items a year. Are we less forgetful or less honest? Well, there you go. Well, that's interesting, isn't it, to see that there's not as many items now as there was. You'd think that would just increase over time with more people using the tube and... Oh, very interesting. Well, we're going to pass back through the train now onto this side and continue looking around to see what we've got left to see. So this is quite a cool little feature in the museum. You actually sit inside one of the driver's cabs. There you go, you see you've got the dead man's handle. Oh, we're going backwards in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's interesting, isn't it? There you go, it's got the instructions on how to do it. So you've got the brakes. Pull the lever towards you to apply the brakes and push it away to release them. Yeah, I don't think we should be going that way. <laughs> and then of course you've got all the instructions for the dead man's handle. There you go, that's interesting, isn't it? I'll have a go at that, I think. I'm gonna shame there's nobody here to film me do that, really. Would have been quite cool. But uh, yeah, let's have a go. Tell you what, it's a bit addictive that is. I've been on it for about 15 minutes. There you are, it makes me want to work on the underground. Oh, uh, but here we go, this post I thought I'd share with you all. So have you seen the new train now running on the Hammersmith and City line? Different windows, different ventilators, different seats, different doors, different brakes, and the new dun 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 push to open, automatic door release, yeah. <laughs> Loving that. Just a few more bits to see around here now. Pretty much covered the museum other than this section down the front here. This shows you how the tube map has developed over the years. Oh, there we go. Back to uh, the start there. Oh, that's really interesting. I do apologize about the flicker. Nothing I can really do about that. It's just the camera when it films certain screens and projections. How interesting is that? Oh, oh, a lot more starting to be added there. Yeah, as soon as you hit 1900. One person air raid shelter. They were installed for staff working in exposed locations. London Transport at War. That's what this whole section is dedicated to. First World War from 1914 to 1918. What are you doing for your king and country? I like things like all the old posters and magazines and things, what they have in here. Obviously from the Second World War, from 1939 to 1945. More old videos to watch. Yeah, see the camera's fine with that screen. It all depends on the type of screen and projector what it is. There we are. It's like we're in a little uh, tunnel there, isn't it? <laughs> Gas, put on your mask. Wow. That really hits home, doesn't it, when you see something like this about the, the war and how it changed the world. Oh, this is a bright section. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, hello, it's me. Hey! Am I a fixer? I don't know, am I a fixer? <laughs> Teams of engineers from all walks of life maintain the health of our transport network. There you go. <laughs> I like that. Oh, yeah, all the different ticket machines from over the years. Oh. Oh, 
I don't think it's supposed to look like that, do you? <laughs> yeah. Poster <laughs> yeah. cards. Spiral Escalator in Shanghai, 2018. God, I'd love to have seen that when I went to China. Just crazy. There's also another opportunity in here as well where you get to drive a London Underground train with the screen. That's quite cool. Let's continue around to look at these London buses. Got a huge map over here as well, right in the middle. Definitely a lot to see in here. So on the other side of that is the giant map. And we're just inside it now. Hidden London. Very interesting reading about all this stuff. New display coming soon, there you go, it's always evolving. That's a good thing being able to come for a year, isn't it? Like I can come back again and probably do another video either early next year, before February, when my uh, ticket will run out. Oh, I love these classic London buses. Ride with pride. <laughs> Oh, there really is so much to see in here. Oh, this object is undergoing maintenance. Another one on the screen's down. I'll let them off though. There's been most of the stuff's been working, which is great. And there's a lot to maintain in a museum like this. Well, there's the DLR down there. During the morning rush, a train arrives at a London railway terminus every 10 seconds. Fascinating. Let's have a look at some information about this traditional Transport for London bus, shall we? There we go. Design developments. I feel like I need to swipe over, but there we are. By the mid 1950s, almost every bus seen on London streets was an RT the standard bus, there you go. Pay as you enter, 1970. I think we can actually uh, go up there by the looks of it. I'm saying that we can't. Let's go and have a look, shall we? Oh. Here we go. Now oh, you can just come up to this section here and see the upstairs. All tickets please, all tickets and passes. No one? No, no one on the bus. Oh, you've all got the tube instead. Oh. On the next bus now, and uh, again, there's no one here. I don't have to collect any tickets. Oh, my job's easy today, isn't it? <laughs> there you are. I like all these signs that you've got up here. There's nothing uniform about our ticket inspectors. There you go. And then this one down here. If you get caught pretending to be a child, you can get a £200 fine, not 200 lines. That's a good one. Get the right ticket, not a criminal record. Wow, strict signage. Just continue back down. I wasn't expecting to be able to go on a lot of these vehicles. I didn't realize how many vehicles there was actually gonna be on display, which is good. There we are, 2001 population, 7,172,000. Some pictures of it in action. Full wheelchair access from 2005, which is great. One of the more modern buses here, 2002. Right Eclipse Gemini. Whoa. Wheelchair access, 2007.
There you go. Oh, so there you go. It was actually converted into the museum display in 2006. So it's actually the bus that used to be in use. There you go. So that answers my question, what I was saying earlier on. Some sort of meeting going on in there, it seems. More information all there about the museum and what they do. Bus 176. Cloakroom, cafe, bar, shop, and the way out. And the future journey for the future of the city. There we are, some of London's mega project milestones. Let's have a look at some of these, shall we? So the 1800s, the modern canal networks allows for transportation of goods in and out of the city. 1906, the opening of three new railways, Bakerloo, Piccadilly, and Northern Lines, expands the tube network. 1994, the Channel Tunnel opens, connecting the UK with France. 1998, High Speed One, the Channel Tunnel Rail Link opens. 2003, Oyster Cards, and coming soon, the Elizabeth Line is set to open through central London. Like I say, it has been delayed at the moment. Cross Rail is set to open at some point soon. All immersive cinema experience. screens and projectors pick up really well actually on the uh, camera. It shows the construction taking place. Whoa, car is bright. <laughs> Project is delivering more than a railway. I look forward to seeing it when it's complete. And there's the roundel for the Elizabeth line. Loving the colour scheme behind it as well. Lots of art and design. It's going to be featured. Liverpool Street Station there. Paddington Station at the top. Canary Wharf, I'm not too sure what's going on there with the design. Interesting though. Revealing stories from the past. I mean, look at that, the modern design of it all. Fascinating, isn't it? New offices and shops. And of course, the people behind the mega project. 55,000 jobs across the country created by the Elizabeth Line. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, here we go, you can put your hat on, look. Not with Crossrail. A snapshot of future projects. The Thames Tideway, major new sewer, high speed two, high speed railway, Hinkley Point C, nuclear power station, some other projects as well in development. Showing the stations for Crossrail 2. Wow. For 2030 proposed opening. Well, we'll see what happens with that one. <laughs> and there we go. How will we move through the city in the future? You just travelled through 200 years of London's pioneering transport network the lifeblood of this amazing city. Throughout the, this history, one consistency is the ever-evolving connection between the city, its transport system, and its people. There you go. I really, really enjoyed looking around there. It's been fascinating. I've been in here a couple of hours as well, like over two hours, looking around it all. Fascinating. And there's some screens all about, some information about Crossrail to end the exhibition. So here I am then, back where I started. So this time we're going through this way, through this tube tunnel, taking us into the shop 
cafe on the way out. There we go. Let's have a little look at some of the stuff that's on sale in here. All sorts of kids' toys. All to do with the Transport for London. T-shirt. Magnets. All the usual merchandise what you'd expect. That's quite nice, isn't it? The Mind the Gap cap. Nano block, the budget Lego. <laughs> All sorts of stuff, it's a huge shop. These coasters are really nice as well, and they're only £2.50. Yeah, I really like those. Something a little bit different. Limited edition, Scrabble, celebrating 100 years of London's iconic typeface. All sorts of mugs. Oh, I've got some pillows as well. Ah, with all the tube lines on. Oh, I like those. Really nice design. Yeah, some really nice stuff in here, isn't it? <laughs> They're quite cute, aren't they, as well? Fridge magnets, two ninety nine. So this is like a bit of a must-have for me at some point. You've got the London Underground light box there, forty pounds. Look at that! Imagine that on my wall. That'd look nice, wouldn't it? There you go. You got the uh, London Underground map there. It's a thousand-piece puzzle as well. I love it. But yeah, loads to see in the shop. There's an upstairs as well, and obviously the cafe. But yeah, I'm going to head outside and we'll wrap up this video. Really enjoyed it. I'm surprised it's still light actually outside. Been in there for quite a while but it's been well worth it. Loving the design of the building. Like I said they fit quite a lot into quite a small space in there as well. The London Transport Museum. So there we are, it's come to the end of my visit to the London Transport Museum. Very much enjoyed exploring there for the first time. Uh, seeing all the different exhibits that are on display, the buses, the trams, it was great, it really was. And the museum itself is well worth visiting. Uh, there's so many different things to see in there, all the screens, a lot of reading material, and it's really well presented and looked after in there as well. Uh, there's only a couple of bits that uh, weren't working, but when you're looking after a big museum like that, um, you know, there's a lot to do in terms of uh, maintenance to keep everything running uh, but yeah very much enjoyed it I'd certainly recommend a visit of course throughout this video uh, I've showed you pretty much everything there is to see in there um, but it's always great to go and see these things in person hopefully now you've got a bit of an idea maybe you're coming to London or was looking at visiting the Transport Museum uh, you've got a bit of information behind it now and what's inside because uh, from outside here it might look quite small it doesn't look like there's that much in there uh, but when you're inside uh, there's so much to see you've got the three different levels uh, with all sorts of stuff on and obviously it takes you through the history uh, of London's transport that I really liked. I wasn't really expecting that. I thought it was more just going to be all on display and uh, you know it was in a really nice order. So definitely start up at the top and work your way down onto ground level. Thank you very much for watching another video from London here on Adventure Sean. Check out the London playlist if you've not already seen it for loads of different videos including the Shard, a Thames River Cruise, Tower Bridge and so much more. And I'll see you in the next video. That leaves me with one more thing to say. Get out there and have your own adventures. See you soon.